how do you resist making the colonel the bad guy? I mean, you all talked about the colonel very honestly, but I think a lot of times when people look at Elvis's life, you want to make the colonel the bad guy, and, and he's not entirely some bad character. I think there were choices, but... I, I, I would like to speak on that, because Tom and Priscilla know this was my dilemma in presenting the colonel. Uh, you had to know Colonel, like Priscilla and I did, to really understand him. He's the very easy to go to villain, but Colonel was not. The simple thing was, and remember the conversations we had, Tom. The Colonel loved, <clears throat> excuse me. The Colonel loved Elvis. Elvis loved the Colonel. He did great stuff for him in the beginning. Colonel was a promoter. He was not a creative manager. Elvis outgrew him creatively. Priscilla says that in the narration. Um, and we wanted to find a balance where I say certain things that are, you know, not complimentary of the colonel as far as choices, stars born, going overseas, all of those things. But I also wanted to make sure that this was balanced, that the colonel, he was not a guy just looking at the money. He, was, he did care about Elvis. Uh, he was an older school guy. He was a pioneer. And I think, Tom, I think we, I think we got a balance on the Colonel. It, it's, it's, it was an important thing from the beginning to not make this a simple story of uh, black and white because it was a very complex relationship. Mm -hmm. So you had to spend, in, especially in film one, explaining the power that the colonel had bringing Elvis to television, the power that Elvis had, uh, the colonel had bringing him to RCA. All those are key points in the artist's development, bringing him to a bigger audience. But at the same time, um, we didn't want to shy away from how spiritually it held Elvis back as an artist. And that's the beauty in telling the story that way. You're, you're not just making it a simple tale of an evil villain. It's the tragedy of an artist not being able to create. Mm -hmm. Was the colonel afraid? Did the colonel manage Elvis with fear? I think when you have an artist as powerful as Elvis, uh, anybody, colonel used to say, well, you'll understand because you're a manager. Because <laughs> at the time I was a manager. The management, being a management of an artist is the most powerful and the most vulnerable position that you can be in and if you don't take control if Barbara Streisand and John Peters can walk in and do a deal with your artist and you're not there you're gone so yeah he, he was as powerful as domineering as he was he was vulnerable and he was afraid he couldn't show that All right and uh, that was a great question it is a great question, and yeah, he was in fear of losing his artist to other management, to other uh, um, other studios. Uh, he Colonel did keep him away from meeting anyone. He wanted to be there, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, if there was anyone there to say, "You want to talk to my boy?" You talk to my, you know, artist. He didn't say artist, but Elvis, you talk to me. And he even tell the guys around, you know, don't let That's anyone right. around him. If they, you see anybody wanting to contact him or approaching him, you have them go through me. Yes, he was in des desperate fear of losing his artist because now he's lost control, and you know that was part of the story. John, I think I think it, it's easy to forget that before Elvis came along, you know, artists basically had guys that promoted their concerts and maybe somebody that sold their records, and that was it. Right. You know, they didn't yep. have managers and tour managers and personal assistants and all that stuff. And you know, so they basically made up the business of rock and roll as they went along. And you know, to have somebody that came from a pr concert promoter. How do I put the most butts in the seats, make the, are my artist the most amount of money? When it's, that's the mentality, and he just carried it along through the rest of the career. It's what, what can I do to make this guy money and make him remain relevant? And a lot of his choices, it's easy to go, well, that was a bad idea, or this was a bad idea. Hmm. But to maintain the career over that long period of time and make him, keep him that famous 
for that long was really something that you know not a lot of other people could have done. And he True. did. And he did do make. He, I mean, he made him money, but Elvis also spent money. Yeah. So you know, he <laughs> had to keep up with him. And Elvis would always say he was the first to admit, "I have a lot of commitments and a lot of obligations. I gotta get. I have to get. You know, this See. particular, you know, uh, tour or this movie to to keep up what I have." And that's true too, but um, as El- as Elvis got older and older, um, he was you know really really realizing that Colonel just didn't have that artist ability uh, to. I mean, he didn't have the ability to keep his artist, and uh, and he just that. And Colonel was a promoter. That's yeah. it. He was like Jerry said. He had no artistic ness at all in his blood. <laughs> well, and John, you touched on it before Elvis and the Colonel uh, was along for this ride. There was no. I mean, they wrote the book. Anybody else in the music business mm-hmm. who come along after yeah. that has, right. has referenced it. They still do today. Um.